Hi, I'm Paul Levine, Vice President of IR Telemetrics. This quick start video is designed to illustrate the key components of our telemetry system, installation of those components into your engine, operation of the benchtop equipment, and the use of our DigFV software to acquire data. The test equipment that you have received will include a microwave receiver, inductive power supply, power cables, USB cable, project CD, and one to four antenna cables. In the case of a gasoline engine or small diesel, the components you have received are an instrumented piston and an instrumented engine block. The piston has been instrumented with embedded thermocouples, microwave transmitter, inductive power converter, and inductive pickup coil. The engine block has been instrumented with an inductive exciter coil, antennas, and an inductive power cable. In the case of a large diesel engine, you will have received an instrumented piston, a liner instrumented with an exciter coil, inductive power cable. You'll have received the connector for the power cable and one to four antennas. Prior to installation of the liner, be certain of the proper liner orientation so that once installed, the pickup coil on the piston is in perfect alignment with the exciter coil on the liner. As part of the liner installation, you will need to determine a location in the engine block where you can drill a small hole through which the inductive cable can be passed. The location of this hole should be such that the cable routing from the liner to the exit hole is out of harm's way and allows you to secure the cable internally to the engine block. Once the inductive power cable has been routed through the engine block, seal the hole with either JB Weld or RTV. Then using a cable clamp, Route the cable through the clamp, double it over, and attach it to the engine block. This will provide strain relief for the cable. The next step is to attach the connector to the inductive power cable. First remove the pin assembly by turning the lock screw counterclockwise. Remove the pin assembly from the housing. Slide the housing onto the cable. Then solder the pin assembly to the black, white, and ground wires per the instructions provided on your project CD. Once the inductive cable wires have been soldered to the pin assembly, slide the pin assembly into the housing, aligning the lock screw. Turn the lock screw clockwise to secure the pin assembly in the housing. Then tighten the two strain relief screws to secure the housing to the cable. For gasoline and small diesel engines, your engine block has already been instrumented with the receiving antennas in a location close to bottom dead center of the piston and clear of any rotating internal engine components. For large diesel engines, you will have received anywhere from one to four antenna assemblies which include the receiving antenna and a compression fitting. Determine your locations on the engine block, drill and tap for 1 8 national pipe thread, and insert the compression fitting body. Once the compression fitting body has been secured, slide your antenna into the housing, determine the appropriate penetration of the antenna, and tighten the crimp on the compression fitting to secure the antenna in the block. Once the antennas are installed in the block, the antenna wire can be bent at any orientation, as illustrated here, to clear rotating components inside the crankcase. When installing the instrumented piston rod assembly, carefully insert the piston into the engine block, being certain that the orientation is such that the coils are in proper alignment. 
attach the antenna cables to the antennas, being careful not to cross thread the fitting. Once secured, route the antenna cable and inductive power cable from inside the cell out to the control station. After your cables have been routed out to the control station, attach the antenna cables to the back of the microwave receiver, install the connector for the inductive power cable into the power supply, make sure both units are turned off, and install the power cables. Connect the USB cable from the computer to the microwave receiver. Once the IRT DigFV software has been installed on the computer, make sure that the 800 RPM and disable switch on the inductive power supply are in the up position and turn on both the inductive power supply and the microwave receiver. On your project CD, you will find a customer cal sheet which contains specifications for the inductive power settings you will need to adjust on your power supply. Adjust the percent power, resonant frequency, and on the back side, the rotary switch position. Open the DigFV software. Under the Utilities menu, select Show Receiver Interface. Under the File menu, select Open Configuration. Select the CFA file found on your project CD. On the Connect menu, select Open Connection. This connects the software to the receiver. You will see a status bar indicating the connection was made successfully. Then select the Streaming mode, check the Time Acquire box, and enter the time in seconds for which you would like each data point to be recorded. For seven channel systems, we recommend 30 seconds. For 15 channel, we recommend 60 seconds. Under the settings menu, select file options, check the auto increment box, type in a base name for your test, browse and select the folder in which you want to store your data. Prior to running the engine, we recommend you do a static engine test. Position the telemetry piston at bottom dead center so that the coils are coupled. The inductive power supply switch should be up in the 800 RPM test mode. Switch the disable output switch down, which supplies power to the coils, and you'll notice in your receiver interface that you've got a signal lock coming from the piston. Arm the DigFV and start acquiring data. The chart display will show frequency versus time, each frequency level corresponding to the temperature for that channel. The highest frequency is the marker channel. The DigFV window will show degrees C and degrees F for each thermocouple location. Once a static engine test has been performed and you are confident that the telemetry system is working properly. Switch the disable output switch up turning off the power. Switch the 800 RPM test mode switch down for a running engine test. You can now start the engine. Once the engine is running, switch the power on by switching the disable output switch down. Once again, you will see in the receiver interface that the receiver is tuned in to the piston. We're now ready to acquire data. Arm the DigFV and start the acquisition. The DigFV will continue to take data until the 30 seconds has elapsed, at which time it will automatically stop. You'll then be ready to move on to the next data point. Please note, Anytime the engine is not running, make sure that either the model 3051 is turned off, the disable output switch is in the up position, or the 800 RPM test mode switch is in the up position. This concludes our quick start video. 
If at any time during the installation of your components or the operation of your test, you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to call us for technical support. On behalf of the entire staff at IR Telemetrics, we appreciate your business and are committed to your success.